there's 27 total here, so I'll just be honest with you guys. Even sometimes I have, with winter annuals, it's difficult. I have to go back and refresh myself every year. So, um, and I can't take, I can't take any credit for this at all. Um, Jesse and Sean dug all these up. And so it's a pretty good set of weeds. So you have to give them props for the good samples they gave you. So, um, so what's number one? Annual bluegrass. Anybody want to disagree? All right. Yep. This is annual bluegrass. So, what's one characteristic that helps us uh, characterize annual bluegrass? Uh, the white seed head pretty much gives it away. Before it puts on that seed head, the stem, the, the leaf, the leaf keels up, right? It's like the end of a boat. And you see it come together. Uh, it's at a point. So, you have that keeled leaf, that, that is typically what we're going to see with annual bluegrass. Fairly small grass, low growing, doesn't get very big. And uh, um, as we get into the spring, uh, this goes away fairly quickly. All right. What about number two? Whitlow grass. It's not a grass at all. It's also known as spring jaraba. I think I've heard several, some people just call it Jaraba. So um, when it first comes up, it looks a whole lot like mare's tail, um, but it's not. This is as big as it ever gets. Puts on that little seed head and then it's gone. So um, when it comes to the weed world, probably fairly insignificant. It doesn't, um, I've gotten a couple calls on it. Guy's really worried. It's not much we need to worry about it with. It, it doesn't get very big and it goes away fairly quickly. What about number three? Field violet. That's what it is. So um, I think I've heard some people call this field pansy as well. I think there is a difference between the two. Um, not haven't seen a whole lot of the two, but uh, it'll put on a little violet flower on it. So it's uh, it can be a, a pretty big pest in turf as well. Um, but field violet is what that's going to be. Number four. Vetch, and we just said vetch species. So you have that uh, pen peninified leaf structure, right? You see all the leaflets going up and down that, that leaf petiole. That's going to give you a pretty good idea you're dealing with vetch. Bonus points if you can tell me what species of vetch. I'm not really sure myself, so. <laughs> right. there, there you go. You'll get a candy bar later. <laughs> All right, number five. It's not crest leaf groundsel, but that's a good guess. Crest leaf groundsel is going to look very similar to this. All right, so this is yellow rocket. So this is a mustard. So you, you have, again, with yellow rocket, you're going to get that uh, wavy oval to round leaf, and then you're going to get the small little leaflets right below it. So it's what we see with a lot of mustards and yellow rocket really kind of, um, that's something that really identifies it is having those two little uh, leaflets below it. And actually this one has another set coming on and then you have a little bit of petiole be between that. So um, we do have crest leaf ground soil out here. So we'll look at the differences between the two when we get to that. So yellow rocket, uh, it's a mustard. So that can be uh, a pretty troublesome weed for us. What about number six? Yeah, so this would be the, the little barley. And at this stage, it's pretty difficult. I'll just be honest with you. Um, if you look at it really closely and get a hand lens out, it's gonna have a membranous ligule that's gonna be squared off. Not a lot of hairs on this, uh, whereas your bromus is gonna have those, those small, small hairs on it. Um, really, it's not until it gets bigger, you start to see that, that seed head, that barley or grain-like seed head that really signifies it and it'll turn that brown uh, throughout the spring. So, okay. Number seven, this is a, a, a buttercup. So this is what I listed as the buttercup species. Um, I, I do believe it's bulbous buttercup, but uh, it's gonna be one of the buttercups. So there are, I think about 25 different species of the buttercup. So there's a lot of them out there. So, um, but this is going to be one of the buttercup species, has that rosette structure. 
Uh, with this one, the, way, the reason why I'm wanting to call it bulbous is because of that leaf structure where you have, it is a little bit divided with the three different leaflets on there. So um, we do have corn buttercup out here as well. Uh, the difference with that is corn buttercup, we do expect the three leaflets, but that's not until we get the leaves on the upper part of the plant and they're more linear. Um, the, bod, the basal leaves on those are gonna be more of a rounded leaf on a petiole, okay? So what about number eight? It'd be field pennycress. So with these, again, it, it starts out as a rosette. You get that uh, oblong to oval shaped leaf that has a lot of waviness to it. And that'll continue as you go up. As you go up the stem, so these aren't, haven't gotten very big yet, but your leaves as you go up the stem are gonna lack a petiole. And actually, as this gets bigger, those leaves will start to clasp around that stem. So once this gets bigger, it's a lot easier to ID, but usually we want to ID them when they're small. But um, this is going to be field pennycress. So um, number nine. So this is jagged chickweed. So when we think about chickweeds, it doesn't necessarily look like a lot of the chickweeds we think of, right? So um, it's got a little bit, it's got a long, narrow leaf on it. It's gonna have that grayish blue look to it. And uh, we're gonna lack the petioles on this one as well, but um, has those same white, white little flowers that we usually associate with the chickweeds. All right, number 10, corn speedwell. So it's one of the speedwells. So there's, again, several speedwells out there. It's a low growing prostrate weed. It's got these fairly small leaves on it and they're gonna be serrated and alternating, or not alternating, but rather opposite on the leaf. All right, number 11. Okay, Italian ryegrass. Probably one of our bigger weed probes in wheat, right? So what's the one characteristic that ryegrass is gonna have that distinguishes it from a lot of our other weeds? other weed grasses. Really shiny. Gonna have a little bit of a red crown. Look at that, uh, where the, the leaf connects to the, to the stem there, and you're gonna see auricles. So what are auricles? As we come around that, that stem, it's like two little fingers or maybe two little arms that reach around and clasp onto the stem. So ryegrass is gonna have those. Most of our other weed species don't. But wheat also has oracles. So telling this from wheat, it's basically going off that shiny look. But um, you get a you get the right type of uh, lighting conditions and it's you you can tell it, right? It's pretty obvious. We have some plots over here. It's pretty obvious what's the ryegrass and what's the wheat. So but and so you can call it annual ryegrass, Italian ryegrass. Italian ryegrass is the uh, weedy name of it. I guess actually technically this should probably be annual ryegrass because this is stuff that we planted from a cover crop so technically it's annual but um, same species on that one so all right number 12 small flower bitter crests so the bitter crest species that paninified leaf so everyone know what i mean by paninified as I go down this leaf petiole, that's actually one leaf right there, but you have leaflets that come off each side all the way down, and then you have one terminal one that comes off on the end. So there's another one out here. There's another bitter crest that looks very similar to this, okay? It has a paninified look, so we'll cover that when we get to that one and the differences between these two. Number 13. Mare's tail, all right. I was hoping somebody got that one. Mare's tail, all right. So um, again, that rosette shape, um, like a lot of our winter annuals, uh, you get those oblong um, egg-shaped leaves, have a lot of hair on them, and you're, they're gonna be roughly serrated. So um, if you're in no-till, you've seen this one a lot, right? So, and again, this is, Probably the prime stage to make applications to it, right? So, what about 14? 
mousy or chickweed. So, what's the difference between mousy or chickweed and chickweed? 17, just to give it away. Okay, so 17 was chickweed, 14 is mousy or chickweed. So, what's the biggest difference between these two? Petiole, whether there's a petiole or not. What's the other thing, if you look at it really closely? More fleshy leaves. More fleshy leaves and hairier. Your mouse here is gonna have a lot of hair on it. Your, your common chickweed is not. The common chickweed has petioles, whereas your mouse here is gonna lack petioles. So the petioles is another thing you can look at, but uh, really the big thing is you look at the hairiness of those leaves, your mouse here is gonna have the hair on it, and then your um, common's not. Okay, 15, crest leaf groundsel. So this is crest leaf groundsel. Here's your yellow rocket, okay? They look very similar, do they not? They do, all right? The big thing with your crest leaf groundsel, it's gonna have more of that purplish, reddish look to it. Um, and that uh, with your yellow rocket, those leaflets, they're gonna be more rounded. And overall, your yellow rocket's just more undulate or wavy. Whereas with your crest leaf groundsel, you got a lot more coarse, it's a lot coarser as far as those teeth go. Or uh, butterweed is the other thing a lot of people call it. So um, as this gets bigger, you can pluck these stems and they'll be hollow. So when the fields turn yellow, a lot of times it's this stuff, crest leaf groundsel. So not necessarily a, a big, I don't know how much impact it has as far as weed goes. It doesn't take a whole lot to kill it. So, but certainly in no-till, um, Fields, you guys have probably seen that out there in those fields that turn completely yellow, so. All right, what about 16? Goes along with this one, number seven. So what was number seven? Buttercup? 16 is gonna be corn buttercup, okay? When we see those, uh, I don't even know what shape I wanna call that, kidney or heart-shaped leaves, those big fat leaves like that, that's gonna be one of the buttercups. Uh, this will be corn buttercup. As this grows and we actually start to see it bolt, it'll start to put on those, uh, the leaves that actually are going to be divided into three and they're going to be much more linear. So once it gets to that stage, it's, it's a lot easier to ID at that stage. But when it's small, this is what we expect to see with, the, with our corn buttercup. So again, the buttercups, there's a lot of different species in there. And even myself, I don't know if I can differentiate all of them. All right, we covered 17. So what about 18? This is hairy bittercress. Is it hairy? A little bit of a misnomer, but if you look at these two, these are both uh, bittercress species. Again, you see that paninified leaf, right? Um, the difference between the two, the hairy is actually gonna have bigger leaflets and that terminal uh, leaflet is much bigger than what your um, than what your other one is, okay? So those are your two uh, bitter crests, your small flower and your hairy. When a seed head is put out? Before. Oh, before. So your small flower with that paninified leaf, with your bitter crest, it's gonna, the indentations are gonna go all the way back to the petiole, whereas with your shepherd's purse, it's not gonna be quite as severe, it's not, those, where it goes back, it doesn't go quite all the way back to that midrib. Does that make sense? So a little bit more court, it's a little bit coarser you know, in those, I don't know, indentations, not the correct word, but so that, that's the biggest way to tell those two. And then obviously once it puts on a seed head, they, they differentiate each other quite well. So, yeah, 19, wild garlic, wild garlic. okay. If you pinch it off, it's going to have a hollow stem. If you mess with it too long, it's going to smell like garlic. All right, so um, again, can be, you know, as far as a pest goes, if we let it go until harvest, having those aerial bulblets is a problem in grain. So um, right now, if you drive around, it's popping up in everybody's yard, right? That and wild onion. So, okay, 20. Purple dead nettle. So it looks 27, just to let you know, is the hen bit, okay? 
the two of these can look similar and the fact that they both have those purple flowers and a lot of times they're even growing in the same field side by side. So you see the purple fields, it's probably some combination of hen pit and purple dead nettle. Um, but there, there is very distinct differences between the two. Purple dead nettle is gonna have more of that triangle to heart shaped leaf and they're gonna occur opposite on that stem. Whereas your hen bit, it, again, it, it's opposite, but those leaves really clasp around and almost make it look like a leaf that's all the way around that stem, if that makes sense. So, um, but again, most of the time, these are gonna occur pretty close to each other. 21, okay, Carolina geranium. Yep, that's what it is. So you have this kind of um, palmate leaf that's gonna occur at the end of a petiole. That's really what helps distinguish it. So you, you're growing up from a rosette, but on one petiole or one stem, you have one leaf, right? And that's gonna be Carolina geranium. 22, bromus. So is it cheat? Is it downy brome? It, it's one to two, it's a bromus species, okay? So uh, you are getting into fine details on that, but you're gonna have a, a membraneous uh, ligule and you're gonna have when you look at this it's gonna have the twisting leaves as it grows up and it's kind of got that bluish purple look so and it's gonna have hairs on the leaf so that's a, a broma species we're not gonna get into all the details of telling cheat from downy brome from a couple of the other bromas 23 curly dock so you have those wavy leaves What's the other thing a lot of times you see on curly dock? You don't see it necessarily now. As you get into the summer, you'll see it a lot. You'll see those little red pinholes, right? A lot of times that's how we associate curly dock, but um, just that big leaf and it's got a lot of wave to it, okay? So a lot of wrinkling, a lot of wave. What about 24? Corn grommel. So it's got the more linear leaf shape to it. I'll be honest with you, I haven't seen a whole lot of it in my lifetime. 25, catch-all bed straw. So why is it called catch-all? Yeah, if you've ever walked through it, it sticks to you. So um, it's those, those stems will stick to you. So it's a square stem. The leaves will whirl around that stem. These are some pretty small plants as these grow. You'll kind of see, you'll, you'll be, even with these, if you kind of grab them, um, they'll grab onto you. So if you've ever walked through a patch of this, you know what I'm talking about. Um, it's a mat, it's just, you know, just wrap all around your jeans and you'll walk out of that or, and you'll drag it with you. So catch all bed straw. So it has a vining nature and it's gonna grow low and prostrate to the ground. So it'll create a, a pretty dense mat, so. But like I said, the big thing with it is, uh, you know, you know, if we walk through it, we pick it up. But as wildlife walk through it as well, that's it's primary way of spreading it around. Twenty six, Star of Bethlehem. It's got that thick, prominent white mid vein. It's probably the thing that really distinguishes it from some of the similar species to it. Um, Sometimes it gets confused with wild garlic or wild onion, but it's not, it does, it's not gonna have that smell to it. And it's not a round stem, it's gonna be more of a, that flat stem and that white prominent mid vein is the big characteristic. I'm not sure I have any great recommendations for control. Yeah, gramoxone is what I've heard is the best thing for it. Two, pet, two applications of gramoxone within about a week or two is what I've heard. So, all right, so who got 100%?